Hello, I'm Bobby Grace, an occupational therapist with Early Childhood Cares. Early Childhood Cares serves Lane County children from birth to age five with developmental delays and disabilities. If you have concerns about your own child's development, we invite you to call our front desk at 541-346-2578. Today, I will be discussing a topic called the learning plate which is one part of a video series presentation in supporting those families who may have a picky eater. I would also encourage parents and caregivers to take time to view the other videos within this series in support of your child's growth in this area. So what is a learning plate? A learning plate is a designated place on a child's dinner table where children can safely learn about new foods through a variety of ways of interaction and exploration as your child gains confidence and tolerance to new foods. This is a plate that is separate from your own child's dinner plate or eating surface. The primary purpose of this area is to encourage discussion, interaction and exploration, removing the expectation that the child must be eating. This is a plate where the new food goes first. The plate could be in the center of the table. It could be to one side of the table. It may be far from the child. And as their tolerance increases, it can be slowly moved closer. This is also the place where a child places food that they don't wish to keep or have on their own plate. Somewhat similar to a no thank you plate. The goal of a learning plate is to encourage your child to become more confident in their interactions to newly introduced foods. First, let's take a step back for a moment to discuss eating, a complex activity. Eating is so much more than simply placing food onto a utensil, chewing, and then swallowing. For many of our kids who may have had bigger beginnings at birth with gastrointestinal complications, or those children with sensory processing challenges, this can even further complicate your child's experience with eating. When we think of eating, according to Dr. Kay Toomey of SOS Feeding Solutions in Denver, Colorado, eating is a highly complicated human behavior and involves all areas of human development. Eating is a complex sensory experience. Consider all that a child is experiencing when they engage with food. They must take in the visual aspects of a food with its appearance, the odor and the sense of the food, perhaps even the lingering smell of what's just been cooked, the various textures of food. A child is experiencing how a new food might feel in their mouth. Is this food crunchy? Is it chewy, soft, squishy, cold or hot? Perhaps there's even a mixed consistency. All this is occurring while the child is also navigating the sounds or what's occurring in the dinner environment. And what we know now about palate preferences when, when new foods are introduced is that children need to be offered a new food, sometimes as many as 10 to 15 times before they can truly decide if they like it or not. So as we consider a learning plate, where can we start? We do want to make sure that there's something that your child will eat at each of these eating times. This helps build trust and helps your child know that there is something familiar to eat while simultaneously gaining exposure to new foods. This is a time to infuse the joy of play, which might be a stretch for many of us when we think about playing with food but playing with food on the learning plate or your own plate in ways that will grab your child's attention. This is a time of modeling. Model, model, model. Join in your child's exploration. View food from their own lens. This is a time of connection and being curious with your child. Learning can be fun and using a learning plate allows you both to take a step forward towards curiosity and engagement. When needed, please, please, please read your child's cues and back up to a safer level if your child is becoming stressed or upset. You know your child best. Keep in mind that the goal is exposure and interaction with food. As much as we would like our children to place food in their mouths, 
We also need to be mindful of meeting them where they are in the moment. Learning is fluid and what works well one day may very well look different the next. Be patient with your child and yourself. Our ultimate approach with using the learning plate is to keep in mind a just right challenge paired with a choice. For example, would you like to touch the food, kiss the food, or lick the food? What do I mean by just right challenge? So here in this slide, we have a picture of a visual sequence strip, and these can be provided to you through your service coordinator at Early Childhood Cares. Here we see different sensory approaches to interaction with food. So in the first slide, we see the child reaching out for the food and touching it. The second picture is a child bringing their hand up to their nose and smelling the food. The third picture is a child maybe bringing the food just up close enough to their mouth and giving it a kiss. And the fourth picture is perhaps of having a taste of the food. So really looking um, at where your child's at with their engagement with food and finding that just right challenge bringing them into stretching them just beyond a little bit of discomfort in terms of this is bold, this is brave, um, and having them challenge themselves when they interact with food. As we look at that just right challenge, we always need to remember to mix in the ingredient of fun. So when we think about engaging with foods, we also think about what are ways that your child can participate and get up close and personal with food without necessarily bringing it to their mouth. And one is to consider the ways to move alongside you when you're cooking, whether that's scooping and pouring, stirring, using a kitchen brush for painting foods with oil, whether that's painting oil on vegetables that you're going to roast or painting a sauce onto new foods, but really looking at it as kind of an art project with food. What are some other ways that children can learn about food? Interaction. Getting closer to food simply by having food that's passed by your child at the dinner table, or if they are old enough, having them help to pass the food. Encouraging your child to scoop or serve food onto your own plate, and if they might be interested, placing a small amount onto their own plate. It may not even be eaten, but it is a step forward towards interaction. Having your child stir a food or using another utensil, perhaps tongs, or even another piece of food for stirring. Being creative in your approach. And so interacting with food doesn't necessarily always mean bringing it to their mouth and eating it. There's kind of steps to look at in this process of how to engage with food. When we're learning about food, how do we teach tolerance to these new foods? Well, we describe the properties of food. We talk about them and we're specific with our own descriptions. For example, hey, this is purple. What else might be purple in the room? Or this sounds crunchy when I bite into this. Hmm, what else makes a crunchy sound that we have eaten? Being creative in how we manipulate foods, whether that's using child-sized tongs, safe skewers, stacking foods, um, here in this picture, we have what looks like a green ice cube tray, and it's actually a little um, child, act, it's a child toy. It's meant for the kitchen, but it's called Fun Bites, and it's something that the child can press down onto like a sandwich or different foods to put them in bite-sized pieces. It's also a great way to work on fine motor skill building. And giving choices. Would you like this on your plate, or shall this go on the learning plate? Here in this slide are some examples of scripts that may be helpful. And of course, scripts are just kind of tools that you can use. Um, you can take portions of this or find your own responses when your child might have some ambivalence or reluctance to engage with food. For example, your child might say, I don't want it and refuses to leave it on their plate. And your response might be, I see that you're not ready to have it on your plate. And so we can put it on the learning plate or yuck, I don't like that without trying it. I see that you're still learning to like it. You don't have to eat it, 
but please don't say yuck about something others think are yummy because these this is one of my favorites. So finding ways to avoid some of those power struggles and power plays um, and realizing that it's okay, you're acknowledging where the child's at and you're giving them a choice. Teaching your child to be a food explorer is a process through the learning plate. This approach helps minimize the pressure on both of you. You are truly looking through a lens of curiosity and exploration and fun. And so whether that's stacking food as we see in this picture here with radishes or playing tic-tac-toe with spirit with asparagus spears or creating smile, you know, smiley faces with peas or with orange wedges, uh, making X's and O's with, with veggies, but being able to realize that food is safe to pick up, it's fun to play with, and being curious. So really joining in and learning with your child. And lastly, remembering that learning truly is a journey, one that you are on with your child. So be patient with the process, your child, and most of all, be patient with yourself. I hope this was helpful. And should you have additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your service coordinator through Early Childhood Cares for guidance. And please be sure to view our other parent videos in this series. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation.